Good morning, this is Mrs. Heisenbuttel, and today we're going to be talking about uh, VEX testbed programming. So as you can see on the screen, that's what your VEX testbed should look like at this point. You've got two wheels, one on either side, you've got your Cortex, your potentiometer, your line tracker, your bump switches, your limit switches, and we are going to talk about how to work all those together to actually get them to program and do what you want. So, first thing you need to know is that you need to set up Robot C. So you're going to click on the icon on your desktop that looks very much like this one right here that says Robot C for VEX. And when you open it up, you're going to get a start page that kind of looks like this. And we're using 4.0 or I think we're up to 4.2 or something at this point. But they are all going to be pretty similar in the way that they look when they open up. And you're going to get the little information screen. Don't worry about it. So the very first thing you have to do is you have to set your platform type. And people often forget to do this. And then if you forget to set your platform type, you're going to end up with some interesting problems because none of your natural language will show up on the left hand side of your screen for you to be able to drag and drop or do any code. So <clears throat> the first thing to always check is go to robot, pull down to platform type over and make sure that VEX 2.0 Cortex is selected and then natural language. And that's going to set up your natural language um, platform which allows you to do all of the fancy little drag and drop things that we do. So you also need to set a communication mode and for what we're going to be doing with our test beds you want it to be USB only. Sometimes setting it up as VEXnet or USB works fine and sometimes it doesn't. I find that I eliminate the occasional weird problem if I just go in and set it up as USB only to begin with. So. Once I do that, I want to connect my Cortex. I've got an orange USB cable. I'm going to run it from the back of my VEX Cortex up to the computer. Now, this is going to sound a little odd, but you really need to make sure that your sound on your computer is turned up. And you get the bonky noise when you plug in your VEX Cortex. And I know that that seems really odd, but yeah, it makes a noise. And if you don't get the noise, then your computer has not registered that you've plugged in a device. And if you haven't plugged in your Cortex in a long time, or if this is the first time you've ever plugged it in, it's going to take it a while. Your computer has to sit there and scan and make sure it knows what it is you just plugged in because it's not a flash drive and it's not like a camera or something else that it can recognize really quickly. Sometimes it takes it a few minutes, especially if you're running Windows 7. I've noticed with Windows 8, it tends to go a little faster. So if you're using Windows 7, just give it a little time and have a little patience and it will work. Um, <clears throat> make sure it's turned off when you connect it. If you turn the switch on the back and turn it on and then plug it in, a lot of times it won't recognize it. But if you plug it in while it's turned off and then turn it on, then usually you save yourself a little bit of headache later. So we have to set the firmware. And you're going to notice this very nice large button up at the top now that says firmware download. Um, you don't have to necessarily do this every single time you program with your Cortex, but especially if you haven't programmed in a while, or if you haven't used it, or you've never done it before, it's always a good habit to get into to just start by downloading the firmware. And we generally do an automatic download so it'll automatically go out and say oh okay this is the updated firmware or it's not and then it'll update it. I um, always open a sample program to start from because it gives me a place to go. In our case we're going to be using the PLTW template. Uh, for my students I put it on my G drive. It's under automation and robotics and then as soon as you open it it's a template. You can't save it back to that same place. You need to go save as, change the name of it, call it robot car or spinning sign or bridge or whatever you're going to name. In this case, I would call it test bed and I would do a save as and put it onto my drive with my files and my data. Um, your template, when you open it up, I just wanted to kind of go through some of the parts of the template. The top section of the template 
is for you to put in information like the name of the project, who's on your team, the date. A uh, section is your class section, so if you're in fifth period, it's fifth period. Task description is the description of what you're supposed to be doing, and pseudocode, which we're going to talk a little bit more about later. Pseudocode is I'm going to turn the robot on, I want to run forward for 10 seconds, I want to turn left with a point turn, and then I want to stop, and then I want to turn motors back on and back up, that sort of thing. It's my verbal description of what I want my programming to do. Now your actual programming goes underneath, underneath task main. So you see how task main is in blue here with the red parentheses? Your actual programming would go between those two curly braces. <clears throat> so you can begin and end a multi-line comment with the slash star. Everything that's in green is what's known as pseudocode, meaning it's there, but it's not for the cortex to read. It's for you to read. It's for you to know what you're doing and for you to eventually print it out for your teacher. So uh, the slash star starts a multi-line comment, star, or our star slash closes the multi-line comment. So they're just opposites of each other. So everything between those two marks is green in this example because all of it is not being read by the robot. It is all pseudocode. So uh, that's where you're between those curly braces is where your code actually goes. And this is a step that I see so many students skip. There's a wiring guide. Check it and make sure your stuff is plugged in in the right spot. You should, and I just use the example that we're going to be using with our test beds. You have a line follower in analog one, potentiometer in analog two. Limit switch is in digital one, bump is in digital two. LED is going to be in digital 12, and it doesn't have to be green, but when we type it, we've already named it green, so green works. Um, you have three motors, a claw motor, right motor, and left motor. Claw motor is going in one, which means it's a two pin blue goes straight into the cortex, but right and left motors are in two and three, which means they need the motor adapter. So we're going to talk more about that in a minute and how you use those motor adapters to help you. Check it and double check it, please. Um, make sure that when you do it, it's actually where everything is plugged in where it's supposed to be. Because if you plug it in the wrong spot, it's not going to get power. So to double check, you're going to go up to Robot, Motors and Sensor Setups. There's actually a button right there now, right? There's also, you can go under Robot and do it, but there's actually a nice little Motor and Sensor Setup button in 4 that's right there. You can select a bunch of different standard modules. Um, for our case, we're just going to do the basic gateway test bed. Um, but you can set up all, there's different test beds for different courses. You can set up all sorts of different things. And you can just skip the standard setups and just go in and name everything like you would normally. So, talking about naming. <coughs> Names for motors and sensors follow basic rules. The first rule being they have to all be one word. You can't put spaces in there. You can't put commas or weird funky symbols in the middle of your name. If you want to call it left motor, that's fine. But usually you left is under, it's not capitalized, and then the M on motor is capitalized. Front is not capitalized. Light is capitalized. So the second word always gets capitalized. That's not required, but that's kind of the way Robot C is looking for it. They all have to be one word, no spaces. You put a space, Robot C just goes and doesn't do anything. So um, you can't put in things like parentheses or um, percent signs or carrots or number signs or carrots or number signs. No, that can work. Um, you also can't pick anything that's a reserved word. For example, I often have students who want to name their motor, motor. I'm like, really? Motor is a reserved word. It means something to robot C, not a name. Um, I will often shorten left motor to LMOT 
and R motor to right mo or right motor to R mot. Um, you can't use things like task. You can't use the word left instead of motor. You can't just say left because left actually means a direction in robot C. It does not mean that it's on the left side of your car or your thing. Um, check that all your motors and sensor names. Hey, make sure everything's plugged in correctly. Here's the deal with the motors. Most of our motors are 269 two-wire motors. The newer VEX kits come with three-wire motors, which is nice because then you don't have to mess with the adapter. But a lot of the motors that I have are two-wire, the older style motors. And that means that you have to plug them into the adapter. This picture is showing you what the adapter looks like. It says motor controller 29 right on it. You can't miss it. So two-wire, which is the blue end, can go in one and ten. When you look down at your cortex, you'll see it. Those are the only places the two-pin motor can fit. <clears throat> Everywhere else, you have to attach an adapter to get it to work, to make it three-pin. Now, I often have students who will happily plug a two-wire motor into a three-pin spot. One of two things happens. Either the motor runs non-stop for no apparent reason, and it just keeps going because it's, keep, it's getting powered, so it just goes. And you can't control it, and nothing works. Or it doesn't do anything. So don't do that. Don't plug it into the through, the three wire, the three pin port. If it's a two pin motor, you have to use the adapter. Um, two through nine use the motor controller 29s. They're easy to spot. 127 is full speed which makes 63 half speed and 93 and a half about three quarter speed. And someone always asks me, well, what does 127 really mean? Technically, I believe 127 is the rotations per second, but don't quote me on that. I, it's just that's the top speed. Break it in half if you want half speed. Break it into quarters if you want to go slower or three quarter speed that kind of thing. Just know that full speed is 127. Um, the help in Robot C is actually helpful, unlike Microsoft Word and 900 billion other programs I can think of where the help is useless. The help in Robot C is actually pretty good. Um, you just open it up, do a search by topic or command. You can't remember what the what the um, variables are for your potentiometer. I don't know what it measures between. So type in potentiometer numbers and it'll come up and show you different things that you can click on and get information about a specific piece or a specific command. All right, so this is where I'm going to tell my students to stop, do these steps. This is the basic list of steps that I would expect you to do every time you open a robot C. Open your template from the G drive, save it to your U drive, Fill in the heading information, including pseudocode if you have it. Check your Cortex setup, make sure everything's there and ready to go. And then go to motors and sensor setups and make sure those are all named correctly and they're where they're supposed to be. So why don't you stop here and go do that.